Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Missouri Tigers. I have a little recruiting update along with the spring football update. And we're going to start out with recruiting here. The Tigers currently sit with the 28th ranked class. Head coach Eli Drinkwitz, he understands what he's going up against in the SEC. In most games, his team won't have the most talent, but he's doing his best to get great players on campus. It all started back in the 2022 class when they got five-star number one wide receiver Luther Burden. In 2023, they got a very underrated quarterback in Jabari Johnson out of the state of Washington, while also collecting Jake Garcia and wide receiver Theo Weiss Jr. from Oklahoma. Now the focus turns to 2024, where Eli Drinkwitz is trying to get a top 25 class, top 20 class. That's probably the goal. A lot of, a lot of good players left on the board for the Tigers. So let's get things started off with their commits. They currently have three commits, four or four commits, sorry, four-star defensive lineman Tion Gray out of the state of Missouri. Then they have three three-star commits, and three-star quarterback Daniel Kalen, three-star Raylan Justice, and three-star Whit Hafer. Both of those last two are from the state of Missouri as well. But where Eli Drinkwitz has the Missouri fan base really excited is the type of players he's going up against. And the opportunity that's ahead of them. So some of their top targets, and both of these guys that I'm about to mention are just two of the best players in the country, regardless of position, and they both happen to be in the state of Missouri. Ryan Wingo, five-star wide receiver out of St. Louis. Missouri is the hometown team in this recruitment, and they're among the top top contenders. Other teams include Tennessee, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, and Arkansas. He recently took a visit to Missouri, and it sounds like things went very well. I expect the Tigers to be in the recruitment until the very end. Now, what would this mean for Missouri? If the Tigers can pull this off and get a guy like Ryan Wingo, who, like I said, is a five-star receiver, one of the best receivers in the class, this would mean everything. And also, that would mean you'd have a season with Ryan Wingo and Luther Burden on the outside, two five-star prospects with either Brady Cook or Sam Horn throwing him the ball, depending on how the eligibility is down the road, and also who's left in the quarterback room. But this definitely should be an, a very exciting thing for Missouri fans. The fact that you have an opportunity to get a guy of this caliber while also pairing him up with a guy like Luther Burden if you're able to sign him. Now, Tennessee, they're probably the favorite right now in this recruitment. But, I mean, like I said, Missouri is the hometown team. We've seen things like this happen before. I mean, Luther Burden, people thought he was going to go to Alabama, go to Georgia. But, no, he stuck to, stuck to Missouri. Went to the lower, obviously, the lower level team and chose his own path. Who says Ryan Wingo won't do the same thing? Williams Winery is a five-star defensive lineman. He's also from Missouri. And just like Ryan Wingo, the Tigers are right in the thick of things here. I mean, this, this recruitment has been kept pretty quiet, but I expect this to be one that goes to the end of the cycle, whether that's December or February. They've done, the Missouri Tigers, they've done a great job of get, getting him on campus. He's been on campus a total of five times already, and that number could hit seven or eight by the end of the cycle. The other top contenders include Oklahoma, who many think is the leader at this point in time. Todd Bates is over there leading the recruitment for the Sooners. You also have Oregon, Tennessee, Nebraska, Kansas State, and then Georgia. They recently entered. Ohio State also got him on campus. There's a lot of teams going after him. Many recruiting sites have him as the number one defensive lineman. So you know that's that's just gonna come come with being the number one defensive lineman. A lot of top programs are coming for you. And this is gonna be a battle for Missouri. I I think they have a better shot at getting Ryan Wingo. Over Winery, but um, like I said, you could just decide to stick stick to the Tigers, stay home. It's just going to be really hard to beat Oklahoma, beat Oregon, beat Tennessee, beat Nebraska, who recently got a strong push in this recruitment, getting him on campus, and then obviously Georgia and Ohio State coming up from behind. Be interesting to see where things go there. Now let's turn it over to the 2023 football season. A little spring update. Some of the offensive headlines just out of spring ball. Receiver will probably be the strength of the, of the team. Luther Burden looks to be one of the best wide receivers in the SEC. 
Standing out all spring. Expect him to have a huge 2023 season. Theo Weiss Jr., the Oklahoma transfer, could be a big part of this offense. Obviously, losing Dominic Love, it hurts a lot. But having Weiss step in is very beneficial. The projected third wide receiver, Mookie Cooper, has been a standout all offseason from what I've heard. Expect some other guys to step in as well, like Jamarian Wayne and Demarian Houston. Who will be throwing the ball? Well, that's still up in the air right now. It sounds like a battle between Sam Horn and Miami transfer Jake Garcia, especially since Brady Cook, he's been injured. Missouri fans should be excited about this, though. A possible connection of Sam Horn and Luther Burden, two very talented players coming out of high school. It seems to be, I mean, they both seem to be finding their, their stride right now together. And that's always good to have two young players, especially a quarterback and wide receiver, who have a very good connection. Now, Sam Horn, his great play in the spring, also he's also had some very low lows. I think his ceiling is high, probably higher than Jake Garcia, and that will probably be what wins him the job or the backup job when Brady Cook comes back. I have a question for uh, Missouri fans. Who will most likely be starting on the offensive line in week one? It looks like Foster and Johnson are set in stone, but what about the others? Let me know down, down in the comments. I'm not really familiar with a lot of these guys. So let me know what you guys think. And then on the defensive side of the ball, the defense will determine the success of the Tigers in 2023, and to put it lightly, this is a very talented group who looked great, great in the spring. Darius Robinson and Ennis Rakestraw seem to be the alphas early on. I talked about Coach Drinkwitz adding great talent, and that statement stands strong for the spring. We saw Travez Johnson, the Florida safety. He's been a great addition so far. I looked at him. I look for him to have a big role this year, along with Tristan Newsom, who had a, from what I heard in the spring game, or like the spring scrimmage, he had a couple of very nice plays. Overall, from, from Missouri, if the defense from spring ball is what we get in the fall, then the Tigers could have a very dominant unit in 2023. All right, that's going to do it for today's video, guys. On Missouri fans, be sure to comment down below your favorite player. And also, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.